Hello, welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. My name is Liz and I will be guiding you on this journey today. I am going to start off with the zodiac sign readings and then I will um, continue on to the human design profile readings. I usually like just kind of mix them all up, but I don't know. I would have, for whatever reason, I don't want to do it that way. But um, I am making this little intro to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Um, I love, I would love if you would do that. And this feels so awkward for me to even <laughs> say, which is probably why this is like, it sounds super awkward, but I rarely, if ever, have even mentioned or asked for subscribers or for you to subscribe. Um, and this is why, because it's awkward and it's uncomfortable for me, which is, I'm just over that. I'm done with that. <laughs> I meant to just kind of stop in the like middle, you know, like once I got to the middle cards or whatever and just be like, hey, you know, something super natural that, you know, it, it didn't sound so weird to be like, oh, you know, subscribe to the channel, whatever. But it didn't turn out that way. So here I am blabbering on um, about I don't even know. So subscribe now so we both don't forget. And if at some point in the middle of the reading you're just like F this B, unsubscribe, you know? It's literally just a click of a button and um, you can help me out. I'd appreciate that. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's get into the readings. This is the reading for Libra. Wherever Libra shows up for you, let's get you an Oracle card. And then of course we'll move on to the tarot. I hope you all have been doing well. I know it's been a little while since I've since I've posted. Um, you know, I basically just wait for the energy to show up <laughs> and freak out a little bit if it doesn't. But then also try not to worry. So interesting. We have fall. What a beautiful card, too. We'll read about its meaning, but I mean, there could be some significance to fall. I mean, obviously I feel like Libra, that's kind of like the, the start of fall, isn't it? Like I'm thinking October, Libra. I didn't even see that fall. We have temperance. Yeah, it's like there's clearly there's something baking. <laughs> there's something in the oven. Oh, oh, okay. Let me see. This one kind of fell first. We have the Ace of Swords, Eight of Cups, Two of Wands, Six of Cups. Definitely like a period of waiting. That's too many. We just need one more. Ah. <laughs> Uno más.
Eight of Wands. I kind of love that. Two of Cups. I almost said the Two of Cups with um, instead of the Six of Cups. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that it came out. Let me just make sure everything is in frame here. Okay. Hopefully... That looks good. Okay, so let's see what this ball card. Falling. That came to mind. It says, I am divinely supported. The days get shorter and the sun's vibrancy begins to wane as fall sets in. Fall brings you the reminder that life cannot continuously exist in summertime's high octane energy. Eventually, it must give way to a dip, a downturn, a gentle beckoning to lower the volume just a tad. Fall asks you to be discerning. It is a season marked with taking stock of resources, readying for the cold of winter, and a time to get clear about what is at hand. Make an honest assessment of your skills, available assets, your community, and people with helpful knowledge. Reach out to those who might be able to play a role in supporting you at this time. This is a reminder that you have all the means, talent, and support available to you now, wherever you may need it. You can breathe deeply, inhaling and exhaling with relief knowing that you are divinely guided and supported. Yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely, I feel like that's definitely coming through. Here, it's even just... Cultivating relationships in some aspect, right? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic. Um, it can be business. It can be just friendships and community, you know, like a peer group support, right? I mean, obviously your family can be involved in that chosen or biological. So it's okay. This is what's interesting to me is that like, we start with these two cards that to me have this feeling of waiting or like a delay period or uh, it's like maybe you know, you know, like there's something. You've been working on something. You've been thinking about something. You know, like the wheels have been turning, but you haven't necessarily seen the manifestation of the thing yet. And maybe it's like, there's just, there's one piece of the puzzle that's missing. So anyway, we have these two cards here we start with that are about this waiting period, or it just at least has a vibe of that. And then we have these two cards here that are about moving forward. So I love when that happens in a reading because it definitely, it shows that we are moving through energy. And I think it's also just validating and affirming especially if you are in kind of a limbo or like a holding period um because you know i mean it just feels uncertain sometimes especially if you're not seeing the fruits of your labor quite yet right it's just like motivation to continue so let's start with temperance <laughs> temperance is associated to sagittarius so, you know, if that has any significance to you. But temperance is all about alchemy. We can see that this angel here is mixing these two cups, which is also kind of interesting since we end with the two of cups. So this could be, um, you know, here, one person, we can say that it's you, um, is holding both cups and they're they're you know, mixing things, shaking things up, 
trying to turn one or two things into something different. Right, and that takes time. You have to master the, uh, the ingredients. You have to master the way that you're mixing things, how much of one thing you're putting into it, how much of another thing, right? It takes time, practice, and experimentation, really, to do that. And all of those things are wrapped up in temperance. We can see that... They have one foot in the water, one foot on the ground. So it's like one foot in the, the ethereal and the maybe esoteric and the metaphysical. Even, you know, water in tarot represents our emotions, our emotional body, our heart chakra. And then one foot on the ground, which is, you know, our physical plane, the 3D where we are. Or, of course, it can be earth, literally, right? Just trying to remain grounded, like trying to keep your feet on the ground while simultaneously your head is in the clouds, right? Like this balancing act between the two, which could also even be what's going on. Like maybe you have these like, you know, hopes and dreams for your future. You know, you have these ideas and it's like, okay, you know, how can I strategize? What steps can I take to bring these things into my my physical world so again you know head in the clouds daydreaming strategizing planning researching you know whatever the case may be but also trying to keep your feet on the ground in the present moment but what I also wanted to say I didn't quite I finished my thought I think but you know in this card when we start they're holding both of the cups and at the end of the reading there are two people one person has each respective cup right so it could even be and I'm you know we haven't obviously gotten through the whole reading yet but it could also be if you are trying to do everything on your own even you know like the fall card was talking about evaluating your resources what you know, assets or, or community do you have available to you to help you, especially Libra, right? Because Libra is the relationship sign. Um, so relationships for Libras are seemingly important, but also having a, a balance in there because the, the symbol for Libra is the scales. Right. So constantly, you know, trying to balance things out, even balancing, you know, one foot in the water, one foot on the ground. Again, balancing head in the clouds and being grounded, balancing your emotional body. Um, you know, if you are, again, you know, esoteric, metaphysical, like grounding that with like real world, like being present. Very interesting. And then we have. The two of wands. So both of these cards are fire. And fire also represents the actions that we take. It's the motivation behind the actions that we take. It's the, the experience, the rewards that we obtain. The wisdom that we get by taking action, by trying different things. It's our passion, creativity. How are we communicating those things? What actions are we taking towards those things? And the two of wands is planning for the future. So it's interesting that I was even talking about strategizing, you know, even planning for the future. What are you, this mix that's happening here, what are you trying to create? That's the contemplation that's happening in the Two of Wands. You know, it's getting clear on at least setting a course, right? It's like, okay, I know that as of right now, I want the end result to be X. <laughs> so in order to get to X, I need to do Y. Did I just make a math analogy? Gross. I... <laughs> I am so terrible at math. 
That is so random. I mean, truly, math almost prevented me from graduating high school. Like, I fucking hate math. But I think that's hilarious. So, <laughs> um, but it fits, right? I mean, and this is the place where that contemplation, you know, they have their phone in their hand. They're looking out to the future. They have one hand on on one of the wands here, but there's also this second option. This almost even feels like a a passage or like a doorway and they're like literally just standing in the middle of it. But to me, this feels like they're waiting for something. They could be waiting for a call, a text because it's 2024. Who calls anymore? Like, don't call me, uh, text me, you know? Very interesting. And what you could be waiting for is that that spark of inspiration that um, even though, you know, I mean, swords have to do with our mind, our thoughts, our belief systems, ideas, truth, but like divine truth, objective truth. It's air, which is obviously Libra. It's interesting that there are mountains in each one of these cards, even the Eight of Cups, but mountains and tarot generally um, represent the journey, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. You know, it can be treacherous sometimes, but beautiful also. At the same time, interestingly enough, too, I was just reminded the left side of the card represents the past. The right side of the card represents the future. This two of wands, this person, they're looking to the past. So it could even just, its it could be one of those things of if you are, if you are approaching something or if you are considering something based on an experience from the past that could even be holding you up here like if you're like i already tried this thing and in the past it went this way good bad otherwise um okay great but that's not to say that's how this, it's going to go this time. And also, what did you learn from that? Because you had to have learned something. Whether, again, if it was a good experience, a bad experience, a neutral experience, you learned something. So what can you tweak? What worked? What didn't work? That's with, like, wands. Um that's why I see wands as being wisdom or information by way of experience because that's what we get by trying things. We figure out what works, what doesn't work. What do we like? What don't we like? What stays? What goes? Right? And we have to try in order to even figure those things out. So if there's something that, that you did try in the past, and that could be why there's still, you know, this temperance is in the works, still trying to prove perfect that recipe, whatever the recipe is, right? So use the past experience as a way to propel your, your future. Because if they were to be looking at this wand, they have their back to the wand that would be facing the future. So I don't know. I just, I do think that's interesting um, and then even the Ace of Swords, right? The, the hand is coming out from the left side of the card. So there's an idea from the past, potentially, that will either resurface or that you're still just kind of chewing on. Maybe it's something that you just, you really can't let go of. You really think that it's a great idea. It's really something that you believe in. You really feel like it's just, it's, it's an authentic expression of you. It could be, you know, with the Ace of Swords, it is something new. So, you know, it could even just be discovering a truth about yourself from this experience 
it could even just be getting really honest with yourself, like a big dose of (laughs) self-awareness. It could be, you know, putting a new um, belief system into practice. It could be having a conversation or even communicating a new idea with somebody or just through conversation, light bulb goes off. It's definitely like a light bulb moment with the Ace of Swords and even this, you know, I mean, it looks kind of like the sun here. We have the sun over there also, but, uh, or in the temperance card, but this just feels like to me like like a light bulb move like an aha moment there's some sort of breakthrough that's happening and it does have to do with your past because then we we have the six of cups which is interesting because we have this hand coming out that's offering this sword right and then we have this person who's offering this cup to this child so there's something that is going to be given to you in some aspect whether that does come from another person whether again it's just it's a breakthrough that happens within yourself it's a it's a truth that you discover within yourself there's some even level of emotional healing here because water i was talking about in temperance cups are water the six of cups is nostalgia which is why it talks about, you know, the the it's the card of the past. It could be inner child because there is a child here. Inner child work is literally you as an adult. Reparenting your own inner child. You you follow the little breadcrumbs back those things that created your ego, that created your personality, that created your your temperament, the things that made you who you are, the experiences that we had in our childhood, right? You follow those little things back. I, when I was going through this deep work myself, I would call them whole cruxes because (laughs) I'm a Harry Potter freak. But I, I really did feel like there were there were points in my life where my energy got zapped. And so it was going back and finding those whole cruxes, cracking them open. And as an adult, you know, with as much experience as I have at this point in my life, re reevaluating the story that that whole crux that version of me however old i was at the time that story that belief system that trauma that hurt whatever whatever it was i would revisit that story and i would you know and grant this takes time <laughs> and energy to do right but um i would you know sit with it journal also and is that story true or not for me right like is that true for me anymore is that something is that a story a belief system a behavior pattern a thought pattern is that something that i want to continue to bring with me is it helping me reach my goals is it helping me move forward is it helping me to perfect this recipe that I keep trying to mix up here? Or is it keeping me stuck in the past? Is it keeping me stuck looking in the rearview mirror instead of looking just straight out of my windshield? And then you pour a ton of love and compassion and grace and everything into that, that whole crux, that version And it just, it brings awareness. You're aware of it. So anytime you have a reaction from that place again, you can be like, wait a second, is that an old behavior? Is that going to help me reach my goals? Because also too, Sagittarius is linked to Jupiter, 
the planet of expansion and reaching your goals and luck and all of that, right? So is it helping me move forward? This card is also acts of kindness. So it's just interesting to me how there's this hand coming out of a cloud with a sword, new idea. There's this hand that's offering this cup here to, I mean, you know, it could be an apology that you never thought you would get. It could be a conversation, like, you know, just something that emotionally clears the air. It could be, I mean, just an act of kindness that just really opens your heart. It could literally be timing. Because after this, we have the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is moving forward. It's recognizing that there's nothing left in these cups for you. You've tried them. You've checked them out. You've done everything that you can think to do emotionally. Think to do, right? Emotionally. And not only are they walking away from these eight cups, they're heading towards the nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment. Having your desires meant it's living the life that you always dreamed of. And especially if there is some level of a breakthrough here, whether that's mental, but also emotional, you know, those two aspects of our being, which could also even be what temperance is working on. Um, the Eight of Cups, it, again, it's like you, you are leaving something behind that is no longer serving your highest good whether that is uh, a behavior pattern, a thought pattern, a trigger. It's not really like being ruled by or like controlled, I should say, by the past. And it's, it's, again, it's just, I keep saying, like, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. It's instead of, like, being so focused on the past and how things were in the past, how they have been in the past, and whatever aspect of your life, right? It's like, you know what? What's done is done. This is, you know, what I gained from it. It could even be emotional maturity, too. Because we also, you know, just like how we gain experience and wisdom from wands, we gain emotional maturity through experience. And then it's also paired with the eight of wands. So we have two eights here, which is about abundance I want to say clarity too. I don't know where that's coming from, but that works. And the eight of wands is fast movement forward. I mean, you know, we have this person that is walking up, up this little mountain here. And then they jump on their motorcycle and they're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> You could, you know, you could be deciding to move to a drier climate. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking because we have mountains here and some water. And then here we have a cactus and it looks, you know, kind of like a desert. So, you know, maybe even just traveling. Maybe you're planning on a vacation somewhere um, dry and hot. 
But wands, the eight of wands, like I said, it's it's movement forward and it can be just like that. It could be a phone call. Again, it could be a conversation. It could just be you making the decision to just go for something. There's no rear view mirror, you know, here like there. I mean, there are rear view mirrors on a motorcycle, right? Like by the handles. I mean, of course, you have to see who's behind you, but um, it just has this feeling of like propelling forward. And too, anytime I see the eight of wands, I think of like a kinked hose. And you know how when when it is, you know, like kinked or whatever, there's like barely any water coming through. But then when you when you when you straighten it out, it just there's this burst of of water that um, was like the pressure was building up and it just shoots out all this water before it like levels out again. It just it always kind of has that feeling of that to me. So it's it's like this burst happens, this momentum to move you forward. So, again, it's interesting. Both of these cards kind of this delay period, this whatever is happening here in the middle, this idea that settles something from the past. Somebody from your past could even be coming in to have a conversation with you or, or present you with a new idea or a new offer. And then this thing happens where it moves forward. And the two of cups at the bottom of the deck is shared values. It's making connections. Both of these people either are reaching for each other or reaching for each other's cups. There could be some sort of exchange happening, but the two of cups is always equal. There's an equal exchange of energy. Both people are coming to this connection with a full cup. So they're pouring from a full, from a full cup. They are able to receive so that you know you're filling their cup just as much as they're filling yours so there's this equal you know reciprocity which is very you know kind of libra-esque because again you know the scales and the whole balancing thing we have the strength card after that which is perseverance determination This feels like victory almost to me, too, just with the flowers, the flower, you know, it almost kind of looks like a lay, but she has a crown on. She's got the flowers on her waist. There's this wreath or whatever around the lion's head, too. It just it feels like some sort of victory to me. The page of swords. So they're holding this ace of swords here. So they're putting something into practice. They're putting an idea into practice they're they're learning something new pages are like the newbies so it's allowing yourself to be new at something and then the world card and then the knight of swords so again even this progression there the world card is the end of a cycle getting off the hamster wheel. All right, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. I will talk to you soon. Bye.